So I mentioned in the last discussion that America, at the beginning of the 19th century, end of excuse me, beginning of the 20th century, end of the 19th century, does the following: we pivot to a more outward focus of our politics. We now, a strong nation having survived a civil war, believe that we have a major role in human history. That perhaps the 20th century will become the American century, and I want to touch upon that idea of a nation being exceptional or playing a major role in in human history. We can go back to the Declaration of Independence, and we can read the language of Jefferson, in which he speaks to the opinions of mankind and declares the reasons for our independence. So. Even back then, at the end of the 18th century, when the country was being founded, there was a desire there for the United States to make a statement about it, what its principles were. But a question thereafter, throughout the 19th century, was a question of: Okay, you do this, you bring into play a nation unto itself based upon these principles. You try as much as possible to live according to them, and as you've seen, we don't in every case. You fight a civil war, you do all of these things internally. But the question that begs to be asked is, what do you owe others outside of you? What do you owe of anything other nations? Do you have a responsibility as a nation to take care of the things that are dangerous abroad? You see in 21st century America that many people believe that Americans must be on the front end of fighting climate change or the front end of fighting terrorism. In many ways, in the 21st century, we very much have embraced this role of, of world leader. But that question of whether or not we should be doing things abroad was still a little bit of a question mark at the beginning of the 19th century. Uh, the, excuse me, the beginning of the 20th century, and that question is kind of answered not simply by politicians, but the question is also answered and reflected upon by many a theologian. So here, I want to turn you. Uh, to an individual uh, named Josiah Strong, uh, who believed that it was essential that Americans, essential that Americans went abroad, because if we had did not go abroad and make the world a better place, then we were not living out the social gospel. We were not doing what Christ had told us to do with and sharing the new good news with others. So people like Strong were very influential in this age, and they and they. Brought into being a, a way of looking at American expansion abroad and empire in theological terms. So I want to direct your attention to a speech where you see these uh, theological terms employed uh, by a U.S. senator. Uh, this man was uh, named Albert Beveridge, and he represented Indiana in the U.S. Senate. And his speech that he delivers in 1898 is titled. The March of the Flag, and I want you to listen to the language of of this speech because you're going to see that theological impulse to do something abroad. He says, "Fellow citizens, it is a noble land that God has given us, a land that can feed and clothe the world, a land whose coastlines would enclose half the countries of Europe, a land set like a sentinel between the two imperial oceans of the globe." A greater England with a nobler destiny. It is a mighty people that he has planted on this soil, a people sprung from the most masterful blood of history, a people perpetually revitalized by the virile working folk of all the earth, a people imperial by virtue of their power, by right of their institutions, by authority of their heaven-directed purposes, the propagandists and not the misers of liberty. Is a glorious history our God has bestowed upon His chosen people, a history whose keynote was struck by Liberty Bell, a history heroic with faith in our mission and our future, a history of statesmen who flung the boundaries of the Republic out into the unexplored lands and savage wildernesses, a history of soldiers who carried the flag across blazing deserts and through the ranks of hostile mountains, even to the gates of sunset. A history of a multiplying people who overran a continent in half a century, a history divinely logical, in the process of whose tremendous reasoning we find ourselves today. What is Beveridge suggesting to us? Go back to that paradigm of God, 
nature, human nature and human artifice, and employ it to understand the role that beverage wants the United States to play. What does he tell us about God? God has given us the natural abundance of the North American continent. God has given we Americans an abundance in virtue and spirit in working hard. But not to use that nature and our power simply for ourselves, but to employ it in artifice throughout the world. Now, can you imagine being an American listening to the speech Right, go back to Douglas's 4th of July speech. Wow, we are a great nation. We ought to employ ourselves in this course or that course. You could see what? You could, you could become drunk upon hearing this rhetoric that, yes, it is my responsibility because I have been made great to share my greatness with others. And there's something good about that, but know it also, and hopefully when you read this, there's something dangerous about that because we've given up what? We've given up a more humble notion of who we are, of our limitations. And we begin to think that it's within our power, not simply to change ourselves, but to change others around the world. An odd statement, given that just 35 years prior, we had completed fighting the Civil War. But one that inspires us nonetheless at the beginning of the 20th century.